Hello, pup parents, and welcome to today's episode of the Perfect Pup Podcast. My name is Devin. In this episode, I'm going to give you seven dog terms that every pup parent should know. They're going to be mostly focused on training and some terms that you have maybe have heard but don't know exactly what it means, but there'll be a couple others that aren't training specific. So let's get right into it. Anytime that you kind of step into a new culture or into a new um, like part of your life, there's a whole lingo and words and you know dialogue that goes along with it that sometimes you know you'll hear it and you think, okay, I maybe know what that means, but I'm not exactly sure. And so I I found seven words that I think are commonly confused or kind of misunderstood or you know especially new pup parents maybe don't know what they mean, and I'm going to cover them, and let's do it. So the first one is recall. The first time I heard this, I had no idea what it meant. I just thought, you know, I literally had no idea. I did not know. But if you hear the word recall and you don't know what it means, you can. it's interchangeable with come when called. Basically, how good your dog is at coming back to you when you ask them to come back to you. The second word, uh, marking and clicker. I'll kind of do these two words together. So in dog training philosophy or techniques, you will hear the word marking. Essentially what marking is, you are putting kind of a a timestamp on when the correct behavior was done. So if you use the example of sit, if you ask your dog to sit, the second their butt hits the ground, you mark and then you can reward. So the reason I kind of use the words marking and clicking together as they kind of can be interchangeable in a sense that many people will use a clicker to mark behaviors. You know, the little clicker, it's like teardrop shaped, you click it and it makes just a distinct noise and it's signaling to your dog. That's the instant that what you did was correct. And it helps our dogs better make sense of what we're wanting them to do and what they're actually being rewarded So that is marking. When someone says mark the behavior or mark it when they do it correctly, that's what they mean. The third word, zoomies. You've probably seen this maybe on Instagram or you've heard someone say it. Basically zoomies, it often happens to puppies, you know, sometimes in the evening when they're getting tired, it can be right after a bath. It can be at random times, honestly, it can feel that way. Basically zoomies are when your dog is just super hyped up and a lot of times they'll be kind of running around the house or running back and forth, maybe barking a lot. It's kind of they're just extra amped up and hyper. Um, And truthfully, it does often proceed or can be a sign that your dog is overly tired. Um, And, you know, just like with a, a, a toddler, a human toddler, right? Like if they sometimes they start behaving more crazy right when they're getting tired or right before they know they're going to go to bed or something like that. The fourth word that every pup parents should know is bite inhibition. So this is like a really kind of a term you'll hear a lot as a new pup parent, because one thing that you will struggle with or have to deal with is puppy biting. And what bite inhibition is, is essentially it's teaching your dog to use their mouth in the correct way and not in an overly aggressive or painful or powerful way. This does also tie into what you'll hear is what's called soft mouth. Um, again, kind of interchangeable. It soft mouth specifically refers often to, you know, dogs that are like hunting dogs or bird dogs. It's the ability for them to, you know, put a bird in their mouth, for example, and not be like biting down on it and chomping on it, but just having a soft mouth and bringing the said animal back to you. Um, bite inhibition is most frequently, well, there are multiple ways to go about getting bite inhibition for your puppy, one of the most important ways is puppy playdates and your your puppy or dog playing with other dogs and learning. There's a lot of self-regulation that happens within dog-to-dog interactions where they will basically, you know, let the other dog know that bite was too hard, et cetera. Fifth term, capturing. So when you hear capturing, basically what that means is you find your dog doing a desirable behavior and you mark and reward that behavior as it happens naturally. So you're capturing the behavior in its natural 
way of happening. So for example, if you're struggling to teach your dog to lay down, which some dogs, it is a struggle for them. You can, for example, wait, you know, even if you're just sitting around your home, you can wait until your dog is just laying down, mark reward. And then, you know, with enough repetition, you can start adding a word in like down or lay down or whatever you're going to use. And you're essentially, again, capturing the behavior as it happens and turning it into a behavior that you can ask for on cue. Sixth term, jackpotting. So these last two, there's some connection here. So jackpotting is a technique that you can use when you're training your dog, when you really want to let them know, hey, what just happened was a great, great decision or a great choice or especially if you're struggling to, for example, teach a certain trick or, you know, teach recall like we covered before. And, you know, maybe you just get over like a really difficult task or your dog's been struggling, 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 and then they finally get it. You can jackpot. So what jackpotting is, it's just giving them many more treats or play or reward than you typically would. So if you typically give, you know, a treat, it's giving them, maybe it's like, four, five, six treats so they really understand like, wow, this was really, really good. It can also be giving a different type of treat and giving more of it, but that is in a general sense what the term jackpotting means if you hear it. And the seventh final term I'm going to cover is intermittent reinforcement. So again, this is something that you will hear pretty frequently. It's a powerful way to um, more strongly reinforce and teach behaviors to your dog. But basically, continuous reinforcement would be every time you ask your dog to sit, you give them a treat. Or every time they do a shake, you give them a treat. Every time they come back to you, you give them a treat. Intermittent reinforcement is going to be like it kind of sounds like you're going to be stagger, staggering or randomizing when those reinforcers happen. So, you know, it might be, okay, once your dog's got sit down pretty well, you might ask for a sit and not give a treat one time. And then the next time you ask for it, you do give a treat. It's what it does for the dog's brain is it, is it creates this level of anticipation and a stronger desire to want to do said behavior because they don't know for sure if they're going to get a reward or not. And again, just to be clear, intermittent reinforcement does not mean that you maybe give your dog, you know, one treat for every 30 cues that they do, but rather it's, it's a strategic way of going about giving your dog reinforcers that is going to, in theory, up the um, likelihood that your dog is going to accomplish said behaviors that you're asking for. So again, it's just, you know, not giving a treat necessarily every single time, but maybe every other time or every third time. And it keeps your dog anticipating and wanting to listen and, and, and behave even more so because they don't know for sure when they're going to get a treat. And it, it's just another technique in the dog training world that can help you improve behavior. So hopefully you learned something in this episode. Hopefully there uh, is a little more information that, that you can use as you are working on training your dog to be better behaved because that's what we're all striving for here, especially on the Perfect Pup Podcast. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you know somebody getting a new puppy or a new dog for the holidays or as a gift or whatever it is, please be sure to share this with them. And if you have not already, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts. I read every single one of them. And other than that, we will catch you on the next episode.